What's up, party people? It's a beautiful rainy day in North Carolina. So, I think today, we're gonna play Battery Wars. Alright guys, so today I'm going to start the LiPo conversion on this OSIT 20R bike and the first thing I'm going to do is actually make it so I can, I'm going to make a wiring harness so I can use either these lead acid batteries that I currently have or the LiPos, just plug and play. And uh, these are the lead acid batteries and as you can see they have these little clam connectors on them so what I'm going to do is actually make a harness that goes from the clam connectors to an XT90 connector and that way I'll be able to substitute the uh, the LiPo batteries or the lead acid batteries because I want to be able to use both uh, if I need to. Right, so I've got some additional 10 gauge 600 volt wire, stranded wire here but um, it's a little bit different than the, the wire that's currently on the bike. This is the insulator is uh, oil and gas resistant so but anyhow it will work so what I'm gonna do is make a harness with a plus and minus clam connector and at the other end it's going to go into this XT90 connector all right so just a quick draw on what I'm talking about so this is a wiring harness coming out of the controller on the bike I'm gonna put an XT90 mill connector there and we'll build a harness harness that has a female connector and then a minus and a plus um, uh, disconnects that will go on the lead acid batteries and that way i can unplug at the xt90 and then i can plug my lipo harness directly in or i can plug my lead acid batteries in some nice fresh clean cuts on the ends here and we'll use our usually these crimpers have a either a non-insulated or an insulated uh, crimp on them and it says 22 to 10 so I'm going to use the insulated crimp so this is going to be the final length of our harness it's not too long um, but this will give me enough length to actually plug into the bike and not be too bulky in the actual battery box so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip these ends we're going to tend these with some solder and then I'm going to solder these um, XT90 connectors on all right so I've just laid my connector in the uh, drill press vise so to hold it and uh, I'm just going to tend this positive wire and lay it in the connector here positive side up and uh, we'll solder it together I'm just going to use my Weller soldering gun here. Um, typically when I'm wiring, wiring or soldering larger wires, I'll use this more uh, gun type soldering tool. It actually gets hotter, uh, more watts, and this one's kind of a dual trigger so it'll do 300 and 200 watts. So you pull it first and that's 300 watts. my ends 10 here and so now I have my um, XT90 connector in I'm just going to fill it up with some solder here So this is the harness, so this goes into our lead acid and this will go into the harness of our uh, motorcycle. Here's our bank of lead acid batteries and so we'll plug our negative in here like such and a positive in here. Now we're going to have to solder by the bike. I might just turn 
this around a little bit. Let's see. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to clip these uh, these uh, disconnect ends off, and uh, I'll put an XT90 connector there. And uh, since this side's female, we'll put a male connector on it. Negative. And we'll strip those. Time to test it out. So, put the batteries back in there. This is the harness off of the motorcycle. So we got that in, soldered on. This is the harness off of the battery. So if I connect those two together, put the key in, make sure I have the magnetic uh, disconnect on, it should actually start. So let's connect it. And, Got a key here. I did hear a click. Make sure the tire is not touching anything. All right, so it does work. So that's our harness. So I did end up uh, using some of this silicone insulated stranded wire versus the uh, the other harness I had, which was um, kind of gas and oil resistant uh, insulator, which was uh, not as flexible. So this silicone uh, insulation is way more flexible. All right, so now that we have our harness prepared on the actual bike, so I can use this connector to plug and play either my sealed, sealed lead acid battery pack or my lipo battery pack so this harness is my uh my series harness so these ends plug into the battery and they're wired in uh, in a way that uh, will put the voltages of these batteries in series so i'll plug these in like such and so now i have my uh, my lead battery pack with the xt90 connector and then i have my lipo battery pack with the xt90 connector and so now it's just a plug and play for the bike and um, one of the other important pieces, especially if we're running a lipo, is you don't want to discharge the cells, the individual cells in a lipo too far. Um, nominal voltage for a cell is about 3.7. I charge a cell up to about 4.18. There is a six series, there's six cells in one of these battery packs, and they're connected in series. So if you do the math, six times 4.18. You get somewhere just shy, just north of uh, 25 volts. Um, so if you put these in series, you're at about a 50 volt system, uh, which will work perfectly with the 48 volt controller. Um, very similar. Um, but like I said, the important one of the other important pieces is, is you don't you don't want to discharge these batteries too low, um, or you're basically uh, reduce the lifespan of the battery itself. So these low voltage alarms will plug into the balance port of the battery and uh, it will let you know through a loud beep and these leds will turn from green to red once uh, the cells have drained below 3.3 volts and so uh, when that occurs um, then you should recharge the batteries so we'll just plug these in uh, to our uh, balance ports here and uh, make sure you get the polarity right so we have plus and a minus there so we get something that looks like that. And then uh, I also have one for the other battery pack for its balance port. And uh, we'll plug that in as well. Pretty equivalent battery system between these two as far as the voltage. This one has 20 amp hours. 
the lead acid has 10 amp hours so the whole purpose of doing this is really to save some weight but also increase their riding time all right let's see how much these uh, lead acid batteries weigh so this includes the cable harness and everything that you would uh, put in the bike so if we look on our scale here we're looking at 29 pounds nine ounces and that is 13.41 kilograms. All right, so I'm gonna do the tear function on this, uh, this bungee here. So I'm gonna try to wrap it around both of the cells, the harness, and then I have these two low voltage alarms that plug in, so that'll give me the weight of the total harness. Um, so yeah, let's do that. So the bungee weighs two ounces. All right, so I plugged my series harness in and I plugged the low voltage alarms in for each battery. And so this, the weight of these two cells are two uh, batteries minus the two ounces of this uh, bungee is our uh, real weight. So let's see what it says. All right, so 11 pounds, six ounces, minus two ounces, 11 pounds, four ounces for the lipos with the harness and uh, 5.17 kilograms. So 11 pounds, four ounces, 5.103 kilograms. And in comparison, we had a sealed acid battery that weighed 29 pounds, 9 ounces. Lipo batteries weigh 11 pounds, 4 ounces. And uh, so that is about a 62% weight reduction. Uh, just going through these lipo batteries versus the, uh, the sealed acid battery. So significant weight savings it does feel a little bit different when it's in the bike too a little bit lighter on the front end and uh so yeah so there's your weight comparison all right guys hope you enjoyed the content with the osit uh, 20r here and the lead acid battery to lipo battery conversion um, i'll be talking a little bit more about uh, these lipo batteries versus sealed acid batteries uh, in a further video if you like the content give me a thumbs up share the link with your friends it's the first time to the channel and you haven't subscribed already please do so you guys know what to do until next time skill up and ride